Welcome back. This is Dr. Jen Sung, where clinical excellence meets excellent results. Last week, we started the first part of our neuroinflammatory series. So this week, we're going to talk about the different signs and symptoms of subtle neuroinflammation. It's important to catch inflammatory processes early on so you can prevent the damage that can occur over a period of one, two, three, five, ten years, right? We talked about different conditions like Alzheimer's, MS, uh, autism spectrum, or traumatic brain injuries or mild traumatic brain injuries, right? So it's important to understand what are the clinical signs and symptoms that may occur when you have low-grade inflammation, right? The beginning stages. So let's go ahead and take a look. So brain fog is one of the most common ones. Hazy thoughts and recall issues. It always feels like you have a little bit of a haze or you just don't feel, feel clearer uh, when you look out into the area or the environment, right? It just never feels like that. It, what it feels like is your car window, you had some mud on it and you use your wiper to clean it off, but you didn't have any wiper fluid. So it cleans and then it has kind of this haze on the window. That's what um, patients who have uh, brain fog feel like. It just seems like they're kind of in a haze, right? That's your first subtle, subtle signs. They also have noticeable variations in the mental speed. So some days they're good, like they're quick, they're like, you know, everything's on, uh, on point and sharp. And then other days, they just can't get going or their recall is very off. They just have problems processing things or making decisions, right? It can vary just up and down depending on what they've done the prior day, what they've eaten um, and so forth. So it's important to look at, am I sharp every day or am I sharp on certain days or are my days that are bad growing? Is it just one day a week, two days a week, three days a week? It really depends, okay? Another one is reduced brain endurance. So when you're younger, you usually have better endurance in the brain, right? So that's where you can do studying, you can go to high school, college, you take in massive information and still process that. Right? As you get older, your brain processing speed will slow down a little bit. Okay? You may take a little bit longer to, to um, memorize or recall information. However, there are people who are young and have reduced brain endurance. So they might do something, maybe 30 minutes, and they're kind of wiped out. I'm tired, I can't read anymore. Right? And because their brain had, doesn't have enough fuel, oxygen, or even activation. It's a subtle sign of neurodegeneration or neuroinflammatory processes. Another one is brain fatigue after exposure. Exposures to things like chemicals, scents, or pollutants. So your brain basically goes, oh, I smell gasoline and just, I can't tolerate that. It's just a chemical sensitivity. The brain endurance is no longer there, right? It's very sensitive to odors and chemicals and, and, and pollutants. So when you start to experience significant changes in brain function after the subtle exposure, then we're looking at inflammatory processes in the brain. Another one is brain fatigue after specific foods or specific pr food proteins. Now I've talked a lot about this in terms of uh, possible gluten exposure or dairy exposure that can create inflammatory processes that you don't really understand. So when we think about food sensitivity, we always think about how does it affect my stomach, right? Am I having loose stool, diarrhea, stomach cramping, etc. But in reality, a lot of these food proteins make it into the bloodstream and causes inflammation for those people who have issues with their gut. So they may not experience gut symptoms, but they actually experience brain deficiencies, brain endurance issues, brain fatigue, recall issues, or just being more tired and needing to sleep more after specific food protein exposures. So it's important to understand that when we look at neuroinflammation, these little subtle signs that might show up, you can't ignore. 
right? You have to take control of what you're doing because your brain will uh, degenerate over time given the exposures or the subtle inflammation that's going on in your brain. So it's important to catch it early on rather than later, which can develop into bigger problems. When, or you will get diagnosed with a specific condition like Alzheimer's, right? It's important to manage blood sugar, uh, know that you have food sensitivities, of food reactions, uh, exposure to chemicals, stress. Stress is another big factor uh, for inflammatory processes to the brain. So it's very important for you guys to understand that and uh, take control, okay? My name is Dr. Jin Sung, where clinical excellence meets excellent results, and we'll see you guys next week on the healthy side.